name is Amy, and today I'm about to unravel a story that's been haunting my nights and gripping my reality. This isn't just another story about a sleep study. It's a descent into the unknown, a journey that has left me questioning the very fabric of my existence. Picture this. A small-town girl, me, in her late twenties, seeking respite from the relentless grasp of insomnia. Sleep had become an elusive mistress, and the dark circles under my eyes were badges of honor for nights spent tossing and turning. Enter the sleep study. It was recommended by one of my co-workers, and it was supposed to be a beacon of hope, promising answers to the elusive question of why my nights were filled with restlessness. The setting was ominous. An old building on the edge of town that whispered secrets of the past. As I walked through its creaking doors, I started to have second thoughts, but I was greeted by friendly doctors and technicians, adorned in pristine white coats. Their words about sleep cycles and brain activity sounded like a lullaby, and I found myself in a tiny room with a single bed, surrounded by the sterile glow of fluorescent lights. The process seemed straightforward. They attached electrodes to my head, each wire a tether connecting me to a realm of unknown possibilities. As they dimmed the lights and bid me to sleep tight, I couldn't shake the feeling that this night would be different. Little did I know, it was the beginning of a nightmare that would infiltrate not just my nights, but my very soul. The first dream struck like lightning. I found myself running through dark woods, pursued by a malevolent force that seemed to thrive on fear. My heart raced, branches clawed at my skin, and no matter how fast I ran, my pursuer closed the gap. The moment of capture loomed, and just before it could seize me, I woke with a scream, my body drenched in a cold sweat. The doctors, with their calm demeanor, brushed it off as a routine occurrence in sleep studies. Nothing to worry about, they said. Just your subconscious playing tricks on you. I wanted to believe them. I needed to believe them. Perhaps it was just my anxious mind, as they suggested. The second nightmare, however, shattered any illusions of normalcy. I found myself trapped in a decaying house, desperately searching for an escape. Room after room offered no solace. Heavy footsteps resonated through the halls, and eerie whispers danced around me. Dread hung thick in the air. And just as the unseen terror closed in, I jolted awake with a gasp. Again, the doctors assured me it was all part of the process, that my mind was merely navigating the intricate pathways of dreams. But their voices carried a strange, cold edge, and the unease settled in my bones like an unwelcome guest. Exhausted, I laid back down hoping the next dream would be less unsettling. Little did I know, the worst was yet to come. In the third nightmare, the fabric of reality seemed to unravel entirely. I found myself bound to a chair in what resembled a mad scientist's lair, electrodes attached to my head, mirroring the very setup of the sleep clinic. The doctors wore maniacal expressions as they manipulated a control panel, sending pulses of electricity surging through my brain. My screams of anguish fell on deaf ears, and just before the mind-shattering climax, I jerked awake, bathed in a cold terror sweat. My recount of this dream elicited peculiar reactions from the researchers. Instead of reassurance, they claimed that such stimulating dreams were a promising sign. 
Your brain is highly receptive to treatment, they said. Their smiles cryptic and unsettling. When I dared to ask what exactly my brain was receptive to, their responses were evasive, leaving me with a growing sense of dread. It was at that moment I realized something was deeply wrong. These nightmares weren't random neurons misfiring. They felt orchestrated, manipulated, as if the doctors were puppeteers pulling the strings of my subconscious. The realization sent shivers down my spine, and I knew I had to escape the clutches of that lab. Call me paranoid, call me hysterical, but I had to warn others. Sinister things were happening within those walls. The doctors possessed the unnerving ability to delve into the recesses of your mind and play with your psyche, like a cat with a captured mouse. The post-study nightmares persisted, refusing to release their grip, leading me to believe that whatever they had done to my brain was permanent. So here I am, a mess of anxiety and paranoia, reaching out to you and anyone who will listen. Those doctors, those doctors, have poisoned my dreams, opening a portal straight to my subconscious. My grip on reality slips further each night as I endure the terrors they've implanted. I'm not crazy, at least not yet, but I implore you to stay far away from that sleep study unless you want your own nightmares brought to life. Believe me, share my story, and let the world know that there are malevolent forces at play in the guise of a sleep study. I know I'll never sleep soundly again, but perhaps my tale can serve as a cautionary one for those who still have the luxury of peaceful dreams.